being at the front line means we are also at risk, very serious risk. And anything could happen to any of us if we don't take our time and do the right things. Fear has become a reality in Bo Sierra Leone. Just days ago, two patients were diagnosed with Ebola virus at United Methodist Manjama Clinic, an indication that the outbreak of the deadly disease is far from contained and could get much worse. Knowing that you, you are so exposed and you are so vulnerable <laughs> and you are more at risk than even the, the patient that you may have to deal with, that's a cause for fear. We are nurses and we are always ready to uh, heal the sick or treat sick people. Healthcare workers are at a great risk of contracting the disease that has a fatality rate of up to 90%. It's spread by human-to-human -human contact and by exposure to animals carrying the virus. There's no vaccine for the disease. There's no drug. It is basically based on supportive care. And maybe the earlier you introduce the supportive care, the better chance of survival. But really, I mean, the disease is, is deadly and health workers are scared. United Methodist leaders are scared for the larger population, too. Bishop John Yambasu moved quickly, using the power of the pulpit to get the word out about a disease which is new to the region. And with four hospitals and nine clinics in the infected countries of Sierra Leone, Guinea and Liberia, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR, is working with West African church leaders, its regional health boards, health facilities, and missionaries to launch an Ebola emergency response plan. But without an understanding of the disease, the population has been slow to accept its existence. Initially, when, uh, when the Ebola outbreak came, in, came out in, in Guinea, the information that people, our people were getting is like, hey, these people, the minute they take your blood, um, is that the time you get the disease and they only bring you in back in bags. Yes, if you take their blood, that's the time the Ebola is introduced. If exposed individuals believe that giving blood samples actually introduces the disease into their system, then they tend to stay away from conventional health care and turn to traditional healers. In fact, it was a traditional healer who first contracted the disease in Sierra Leone. He started with this lady. She was like a herbalist in that zone between Liberia and Sierra Leone. And uh, the herbalist was treating people from Guinea with Ebola. She got sick and died. Fourteen women prepared the body for burial. Eleven contracted Ebola. The disease is most often transferred during burial services. When you handle dead bodies, 90% of the time, is, that's the time you have the infection. The other 10% occurs when you are, is care. Either the caregiver at home or the caregiver at the hospital. Most of the people who have died to Ebola died because of lack of information, lack of education. You know, most of them have not heard about Ebola. I'm concerned because, um, one, I recognize that the level of education of our people is low. And I also recognize that they've not had the message of this Ebola. They are reluctant to accept its existence, and as a result, they are making terrible mistakes. Like leaving hospitals and returning to their villages when they are diagnosed. This clearly concerns hospital staff. We have to convince that person to stay. We don't force them, we convince them and they'll stay. The minute you have them in communities, it means people are going to be giving them care. Those who are giving them care are contacts who are likely to be positive. And you know, that's like an oil spill, gradually. The reach and influence of the United Methodist Church throughout West Africa is an essential tool in fighting the disease. And nurses treating Ebola patients say they need all the help they can get. So now as we work, we talk Ebola. As we go to our homes, we talk Ebola. As we are going out into the market, we talk Ebola. Because some, even educated people, 
don't really want to face the fact, but we are trying because knowledge is power. For more information or to make a donation, log on to umcor.org.